Okay, here's the question. I want everybody to participate. There's this little thing down at the bottom of your screen under reactions. If you click that button, you're going to see that you can raise your hand or there's a little hand. Um, I guess it's a it's whatever that's called, an emoji. <laughs> there's a little hand on the left hand side. That's what I want you to hit. I don't want you to raise your hand. I just want you to hit. I think they're clapping hands. Yeah, it is. So here's a question. If you bought a car in the last two years, Matt puts his hand up already. I didn't even ask the question. If you bought a car in the last two years, hit that little hand. All right. So I have one, two, three hands up. Yes? Yes. I think that's four. Four hands up. Now there's 16 of us, so that's exactly 25%. It's 25% of this group bought a car in the last two years. Now, just imagine for a moment, you're not in the business of selling real estate, you're in the business of selling cars. And you're gonna randomly make calls to uh, subdivisions, uh, just like you would if you're a realtor, except instead of asking them, who do you know that's thinking of selling their home in the next six months? You're going to ask them, who do you know that's thinking of buying a car in the next six months? Now, how, how long before we actually buy a car do we start thinking about it? Well, if you're like me, the day after you bought the last one. <laughs> You know, I'm I'm looking at trucks and every time I see a truck, I point it out to Monica. And I'm like, what do you think about that truck? Well, her response is no. Uh, and you want to know why she says no? She says it's too big for you. You can barely drive the Explorer. <laughs> Not nice. So here's my point. I've been thinking about buying this truck now for a year. Now, when am I going to buy it? I don't know. Maybe in the next six months, maybe a year from now. If I get up and jump and run that way, it's because I'm saving the lizard from the cat because right now we got this going on. <laughs> so, Kai, stay. Hold on one second, guys. That cat is trouble. <laughs> Kelly, do you want a cat? If it wasn't no, Lacey, I have a cat, and my cat's trouble too. You keep if your cat. If it wasn't Lacey's cat, by the way, all three animals in our house belong to Lacey. Where is Lacey? Not here. <laughs> all right. If you call the neighborhood, you're in car sales, you're not in home sales. You call the neighborhood and you ask, "Who do you know that's thinking of buying a car?" Twenty five percent of the people would say, "I am." Now, how often does somebody buy a new car? And, and what, by new, I don't mean for all the high seas in the room. I'm not, talk, I'm not talking about it's brand new. It has zero miles on it. I just mean it's new for you, okay? How often does somebody buy a new car? Well, maybe every four years, maybe. Maybe every three years. How often... Does somebody buy a new home every seven years? Maybe every 10 years. What's my point? My point is for all of you who are complaining. Now, I don't mean any of you because this group is high-minded. You guys don't complain. I'm talking about all the people who are on the call with us today. It's for all the people who are going to watch this recording, okay? For everybody who is complaining that there's not enough, enough inventory in the real estate market that, you you know, it's tough. I can't find listings. I've got buyers who want to buy a home and there's nothing for sale. Hmm. 25% of the people that you speak to, let's cut it in half and let's make it 12%. We're talking homes, not cars now. So it's 12%. 12% of the people that you talk to, are gonna answer me when you ask them, who do you know that's thinking of selling their home? Doesn't mean they're thinking of selling it today or next week or six months from now or a year from now. It might be two years from now. However, if I talk to 20 people a day, 100 people a week, that means 12. 
I'm going to get 12. I am. I'm thinking of selling my home. Now, I just want you to work the math out, okay? The path is in the math. Business is a math equation. And if it's 12 people a month, if you talk to 20 people a day, then that's 144 people a year. Yes or yes. And you're following up with them systematically in order to create emotional proximity, which means when they get serious about selling their home, the, the, their first thought is Kim Clark. She's my agent. She is amazing. She calls us every three months. She sends us valuable information on the real estate market. Every time we talk to her, she's adding value. Kim's our gal. Okay, that's cool. So you got 144 potential sellers. Now, let's just say that 20%, 20%, which means 80% don't work with you, but let's say 20% do. Is that 28 listings? Did I do the math right? Is that 28 seller listings? Yes? Somebody give me a thumbs up. I'm doing math in my head, which is dangerous. Hundred and forty-four times twenty percent. It's twenty-eight. All right, you guys are scaring me because nobody's giving me a thumbs up. Can you hear me? All right, Tulio, thank you. It's twenty-eight list. Thank you. So that's 28 seller listings simply by doing one thing. Who do you know that's thinking of selling their home? Now, who should you ask this question to? Get ready to write the answer down because it's brilliant. <laughs> Everyone. Everybody. <laughs> there you go, Daryl. Everybody. Now, believe it or not, Daryl, I... I I'll have coaching conversations with real estate agents, right? And, and not agents in this group, okay? Re, just hear me. I'll have conversations with real estate agents who aren't coaching with me, who aren't a part of Survive to Thrive. And when I say everyone, I'll hear, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> right? And I'm like, well, let's think about it. Um, every one. If you're standing in line at Starbucks, the person who's standing in the line next to you, if you're at a party and you're talking to a friend or a family member, ask them, who do you know that's thinking of selling their home? If you're at a networking event, hey, by the way, my name is John Dietz. I'm a real estate agent with Blank Real Estate Company. And just out of curiosity, who do you know that's thinking of selling their home? How difficult is that? Now, what if somebody says, I don't know of anybody. Oh my gosh, my life is over. I just absolutely can't handle it. That's rejection. I'm taking my bat, my ball, and I'm going to run home. No, just go ask the next person. Hey, Feliz, I was just talking to Kelly, you know, and, I, and I'm a real estate agent, by the way. And, and I asked Feliz if she knew of anybody that was thinking of selling their home. She said no. So I'm curious, who do you know? Feliz says, I am. Now, is Feliz going to come over and tap me on the shoulder? Where's the camera? Tap, tap, tap. Is she going to come over and tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, by the way, I heard you talking to Kelly, and I just want to let you know I'm thinking of selling my home. No, she's not. But if I go over and ask her, she'll say, I am. Now, if I were to get out of real estate training and coaching, here's what I would do. I would become a, a coaching, uh, I would become a coach and a trainer for car sales. And I would travel the country and I would tell them, guys, I've got a brilliant idea for you. Get all of your salespeople together. I'm going to tell you how to sell more cars. I want you to start calling people and asking them, who do you know that's thinking of buying a car in the next six months? You're going to sell more cars. I promise you are. Or you can stand there on the car lot and wait for people to come to you. Have you ever asked, um, who do you know that's thinking about moving out of state anytime soon? All good questions. 
All good questions. Who do you know that's thinking of investing in real estate? Another great question. Um, just out of curiosity, what's your game plan for investing in real estate in the next 10 years? Huh? Really good question. What do you think you're going to hear? I don't have one. Hmm. Love to get together with you and talk to you about that. If I could show you a way that in 10 years, you could purchase one investment property per year that cash flowed $10,000 a year. In 10 years from now, you have $100,000 coming in and passive income through property ownership, not including the value of the property and what that's what's happening with that. Would you be interested in learning how to do that? What do you think you guys are going to hear? Yeah. Yeah. Are you calling your database? Are you calling your sphere of influence and your past clients and asking them, hey, by the way, you know, I know you just bought a home last year and thank you so much for working with me. I'm grateful. I also appreciate all the referrals you've given me. And I was thinking, you know, part of my job is to provide value to you. And it would be financial malpractice if I didn't ask you what your investment strategy was. Hmm. Are you asking your clients that? Probably not. Why not? Here's one of your answers. I don't want to sound desperate. That's a myth that lives in your head. You don't sound desperate. You sound like a professional. If somebody were to come to me and say, John, just curious, what's your what's what's your investment strategy? You know, I know you're 60, huh? <laughs> and you're probably probably going to retire soon. One of my least favorite questions when I'm playing golf with somebody that I don't know is they ask me, are you retired? I'm like, seriously, please don't ask that question to anybody. <laughs> Okay. Now, if they said, John, I know you're 60. What's your invest? What's your what's your strategy? What for the next 20 years for investments? What is your legacy wealth strategy that you that you're following in order to provide wealth for your family long after you're gone? What does that look like? What if I could show you how to create legacy wealth for your family? through real estate investments. Would you be interested in learning how to do that? The Aladdin Factor, great book. The reason most people are not getting what they want is because they're not asking. You've got to simply ask. Here, I'll give you a hack that absolutely works. Next time you go to a hotel and they tell you we're booked, get ready to write this one down. It works, Daryl. Next time you go to a hotel and they tell you we're booked, I want you to ask them this question. If the president showed up today, would you have a room for the president? What do you think they're going to say? Somebody answer me. What do you think they're going to say? They'll say yes, yes. They'll say yes. Of course. Then you're to follow that up with good news. The president isn't coming. I'll take his room. It works. I've tried it. You're, they're going to die laughing and they're going to go, okay, we've got a room. It's yours. Next time you check in at the, for a flight you're taking, ask Can you upgrade me in your first class? Simple question. Now, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to check and see if they have any availability. Now, I know the myth that's inside your head right now. You're thinking that they'll be glad to upgrade you to first class if you're willing to pay the difference. It's not what's going to happen. They'll upgrade you to first class for free. But only if you ask. The reason you're not getting the things in life you want is because you're not asking for the things in life you want. 
It's the whole concept behind the Aladdin factor. The reason you're not selling more homes is you're not asking enough people if they're thinking of selling their home. It's just that stinking simple. Now, you'll sit at home and you'll spend hours creating a new business card. Or you'll spend hours working on a new fancy website or hours on a marketing plan when all you got to do is just pick up the phone and ask people, who do you know that's thinking of selling their home in the next six months? I talk to real estate agents. It's part of my job. I'm a trainer, I'm a coach, and I'm a recruiter. So I recruit real estate agents. And I talk to an average of 10 real estate agents a day. Now, the most common response to a recruiting call is, I'm happy, I'm comfortable. Most common response, I'm happy, I'm comfortable. Even if I can prove to them that there's a better opportunity, there's a bigger opportunity for them. I'm still hearing, I'm happy and I'm comfortable. Why is that? Now, here's the other thing I'm hearing. I'm working for a company that provides leads. Cool, let's hang with that. How much are you paying for that? Well, I'm on blank, blank split and my split is 50-50 if it's a lead that comes from the company. Now, let's just say on average, because I'm talking to a lot of people, this is not a made up number, it's real. On average, real estate agents are paying 20% per closing for leads. 20% per closing for leads. Now, let's say you've got a real estate agent that's earning $100,000 a year, and all of it came from leads that they were getting from their broker. 20% of $100,000 is $20,000. So they're spending $20,000 on leads. When that same agent could pick up the phone for free and ask, who do you know that's thinking of selling their home in the next six months? And they're going to get leads. They're going to talk to people who say, I am. Let's go back to the same numbers we used earlier. 144 potential sellers by talking to 20 a day, 100 a week. 20% of that is 28. 28 listings that didn't cost you a dime. 28 closings at $10,000 a piece is $280,000 and it didn't cost you a dime. Or you could pay $56,000 for those leads. And you're choosing to pay $56,000 because it's comfortable. So what's the cost of being comfortable? And you still won't change. Now, when I say you, just again, Remember, I'm talking to everybody who's going to watch this video. I'm not talking to this group because this group is different. Now, I want you to take yourself off mute. I want you to raise your hand and I want you to talk to me. Now, before I say go, because you guys are going to make me look good or you're going to make me look really bad, which is fine. Please talk to me because I'm not stopping the recording. I don't want awkward silence. <laughs> Be uncomfortable and talk to me. Go ahead, Matt. I, I'm looking for something to say. I mean, I just, I, I soak up everything, everything that you do, bro. You know, I'm actually... Um, I'm just grateful to be part of the call every morning. I'm, I'm glad I, uh, um, I made that commitment. You know, I find ourselves, um, especially, you know, talking with Shan because she's outworking me right now, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. um, like finding using little things that we've learned through these calls that will come out in conversations. And we're like, oh, wow, you know, that was that was really good. That was, you know, something John taught us. 
Shan, I don't know if you can if you can chime in or anything, but there was something yesterday. You were like, I used this particular approach and it worked. What was that? Do you remember? Yeah, John. So it was just what you were sharing with me because I had asked the question when I met and did that preview the other day that the potential client mentioned that she wasn't interested in working with any agent and every mm. agent keeps calling her to say the same thing that, you know, they just want to list her home. So I was asking you, how do I follow back up when she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to hear that. Gave me, I used it on another client follow-up that their properties just hit 35 days and he's been trying to sell it on his own. So I said the exact same thing that you told me. So I'm going to go back today yep. and present, do my listing presentation. There you go. There you go. Proud of you. Uh, you. Clarissa has her hand up and then Beth has her hand up. So Clarissa. Good morning. Um, so I don't have a problem. And John, you know me. I don't have a problem calling and talking to people. Mm -hmm. But where my where I've noticed that I do have the problem is asking that question. Who mm -hmm. do you know? Mm -hmm. I'll get there, check in. You know, I do my care calls, just checking in. How's everything? You know, we haven't seen each other for a while. We need to get together, blah, blah, blah. But when it comes to that crucial moment where I know I should ask that question, I don't. And I don't know if there's an easier way to slide into it. I guess I feel guilty when I haven't called them in a while. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Alone. You're not alone. I feel the same way when it's people that are in my sphere. I don't want to feel like they're, um, they think I'm using them. Right. Right. So when you make deposits, what happens? Well, when I make consistent deposits, the balance will increase. Yep. When you have created months of appreciation and a greater balance, what do you get to do now? Make a withdrawal. Okay. So Clarissa, you know, just out of curiosity, if you knew of somebody that was going to buy or sell real estate, would you refer them to me? Sure, John. You would. I really appreciate that. And as you know, the real estate market's still doing really well. Uh, homes are selling quickly. Homes that are priced correctly are selling quickly. But we're starting to see a shift in the market and there's a shortage of inventory. So we're looking for seller listings right now. And just out of curiosity, who do you know that might be thinking of selling their home in the next six months? Now, do you feel like I was salesy or pushy or are you irritated at me? Are you angry that I asked the question? No, no, no. But if we were your friend, we would know the business you're in and we we would be OK with that. If we had a really good relationship with you, we'd be like, oh, that's OK. That's so then, good. OK, Beth, absolutely. Then the next question becomes, how long does it take to create a really good relationship with someone? I'm going to tell you it could take a couple hours. It might take 20 minutes. If you are showing them value and in, in what you're saying and who you are, then you're not going to sound salesy. I promise you. Okay. It, it's a myth that lives in your head. Remember what I said. What do most real estate agents say to me when I call them and ask them, hey, can we meet so I can share this new model that I'm working on and see if it's a good fit for you? I'm hearing I'm comfortable. All right. I'm comfortable means I don't want to be uncomfortable. It's the same thing that somebody says that knows they should be exercising, but isn't because they're comfortable and they don't want to be uncomfortable, even though they know the benefit from being uncomfortable is worth being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. The benefit of asking people these questions is worth the discomfort of asking the questions. Yeah. And um yeah. Oh. 
Daryl, uh, go ahead, Beth. You had your hand up, so I'm coming back to you. Go ahead, Daryl. What I was going to say is, like, you know, when you call SOI, you don't even have to bring it up. Every time when I call somebody that's about SOI, have a regular conversation with them, they bring up real estate. They ask me how real estate is. And then you can go into those questions. So if you just call somebody just to talk to them, chances are they might bring up real estate because they know you're in it. It happens every single time I talk to somebody that that they just they bring it up. So then you never have to sound like you're calling them for real estate. Even if you are, you can let them bring it up. There you you can ask them how they're doing at their job and that'll trigger them to bring it up. What he just said, write it down. Yes. Now, when they ask you how things are going, here's your answer. Super busy. Oh my gosh. The market is awesome. It's a great time to sell. I'm super busy. And I'm never too busy for your referrals. Who do you know that might be thinking of selling their home? All right, Beth, talk to us. We're going out on this one, guys. Yeah, no, I was just going to bring up, um, we were talking about fear. And I believe that maybe they're connected, you know, um, being uncomfortable and fear. Um, and I believe that uncomfortable <laughs> turns into that and you have to turn it off. Uh, it comes to me every time I pick up the phone and more so if it's a friend and I don't know why. So that's when I just have to say, this is stupid. This is, where does this come from? Because that's not me. So I just push through that fear every single time. It's just something that's going to come up. 